So last week, Taylor Swift came out and did what everyone thought was unthinkable. She went out and said that she supports all Democrats all the time, no matter what, and will be putting her voice behind every single Democrat, and thus far will be a Democrat, shattering the image that all young conservatives had of her throughout the media. Except she didn't do that. That's just the proportion that this has all been blown out into. Now, to be completely fair, Swift did come out and say that she could no longer put her endorsement or her vote behind Tennessee Representative Marsha Blackburn. Taylor, a Pennsylvania native who is now a Tennessee resident due to her music career, has been very silent about the way that she votes and otherwise, prompting a lot of people to believe that she herself was a conservative, a Trump supporter, and many other things that people believe about her that I don't necessarily believe about her. And this has caused a lot of raucous stories about Swift herself, and this has caused a debate as to how we see celebrities in politics these days and why it is that we listen to what it is that they have to say. Now, celebrities in politics is nothing new in this world. This has been a constant criticism or a constant praise, depending on what party the politician represents, going all the way back to Reagan era and even prior to that. I know Reagan was one of the most prominent actors that's ever been in the White House thus far, with Trump himself being a reality celebrity rather than an actor before. And the joke always was, from what I can remember of the 80s, the fact that nobody in the 50s would have believed that Reagan would have ever been president. That was highlighted in one of my favorite movies, Back to the Future, when Marty first told the doc that Reagan was the president in the 80s. But going beyond that, there's been a long-standing tradition of championship sports teams, musicians, and other sorts of actors being invited to sit at the White House and meet with the president, usually a president who is a fan of the particular celebrity actor or singer. But the sports teams usually have an invitation to go and visit the White House after they win a championship. Some of them accept and some of them decline, and generally, until recently, it hasn't even really been much of a big news story. I couldn't remember any news coverage of the Packers going to the White House after they won Super Bowl Thirty back in the 90s. And I can't really recall any other form of... I know it happened, but I can't really recall any other form of sports endorsement up until the issue came out about the Boston Bruins star after the championship getting invited to the White House and declining. That does seem to be the only thing that we hear about is celebrities that decline their opportunity to visit the White House rather than the celebrities that accept. However, the professional politics of celebrities coming to visit the White House is not the issue that we're sitting at on hand today. It's not what I came here to talk about. What we really need to look at and wonder about and the debate that really sprung up out of this Taylor Swift news story is whether or not we should care or whether or not we do care about what celebrities think about politics and the direction of our country. I'm going to go back and pick on Taylor for just a minute here because her situation seems to be a lot different than any other celebrities that are calling about politics now. And... I honestly kind of support the way that Taylor thinks as a centrist and as somebody who has voted for both parties in his life. I kind of like where she went. Now, when I first heard about this, I looked for articles so I could verify it. And the first article that I stumbled across was a Daily Wire article. In this article, the writer states that Taylor Swift came out and said that she would not vote for Marsha Blackburn because she felt uncomfortable about Blackburn's voting record in the House of Representatives. The writer went on to say that Taylor now was coming out of the closet as a full-on Democrat after being such a beacon of hope for conservatives, and because of that, she was going to vote Democrat because obviously she has to. She's a high school dropout who later got a GED, and is held in high standard as a celebrity, and otherwise would not have a single thought in her head. 
What I like least about this article is the all or nothing nature that comes out of it. The writer of the article first implies, as I mentioned, that Taylor is now a full-on blue Democrat who votes for every single social program out there. And Taylor never said anything of the sort. In fact, Taylor has mostly abstained from politics throughout her career, at least talking about them, unlike many of her peers in the world. And of course, there have been other people out there talking about this. One of the biggest talking points on the internet is the fact that Taylor is betraying her country fans because she really doesn't have any country fans anymore. That she sold her soul to the pop industry and decided that she was going to do the things that pop artists do instead of doing the things that country artists do because she is, of course, no longer country. I find this interesting because with Swift's abstinence from talking about her personal politics, there was a large amount of people in both the alternative media and the mainstream media and in just general everyday life that assumed that Swift was a conservative and she just didn't want to say it out in Hollywood where she would be ostracized about it. It's very easy to see why people out there may make the assumption of Swift's conservatism. She refused to speak publicly about it, and she did grow up into a more conservative community of music. She was a child star, so she, while well, maybe had personal politics growing up, she didn't have really any opportunity to voice them or have them taken seriously until she was legally an adult and in the music industry. And most of her views may have been shaped by the more conservative fans that she had, and certainly the more conservative artists that she grew up listening to. But I don't believe this is the case either. Swift has come out and said that she refuses to vote for one particular House representative. She has not come out and endorsed the Democrat Party in whole, and she has not come out and condemned the Conservative Party in whole. Apparently, there's been some sort of issue that Marsha Blackburn has had, possibly in relation to her views on the music industry, especially given the fact that she represents such a large industry in her state, or some other sort of voting record that Swift directly could not come out and endorse. And she's, again, only talked about one particular politician. She hasn't talked about any other politician. With all of this in mind, we could easily draw a conclusion that Swift herself is either a centrist, doesn't vote down one particular side of the ticket or the other, or simply does not wish for any of us to go out and see her voting record and completely remain an enigma in the political sphere. She could possibly only be voicing her dissent against one decision that Blackburn has made, and that is for her to decide, and that's not for any of the rest of us to decide. And com to be completely honest, if she doesn't want to share, it's really not any of our business. Now, with all of this in mind, the next thing that we need to talk about is whether or not we should or do care what celebrities think about politics and politicians. Brady Leonard of the No Gimmicks podcast, and also the singer of my outro music, tweeted out earlier in the week about the Taylor Swift argument. He said that after citing an article, nobody cared about what Taylor Swift thought about politics, or any celebrity for that matter. And I don't necessarily believe that's true. Sorry, Brady. There's been a phenomenon that I've been noticing over the last few years. It became very prominent after Barack Obama was elected for his second term, and it became impossible to ignore after Donald Trump was elected. Now, when we look back at when we were growing up, when we were younger, before social media, it was almost impossible to tell what the personal politics was of any particular celebrity. You had really no way of knowing. You watched your favorite actor go up on stage and act, or on the movie screen and act. You could maybe tell some of their personal politics by looking at the projects that they picked. But, for the most part, they didn't really talk about it in their award shows, and they really didn't have any other platform otherwise to talk about it. We didn't live in a world where we gave a press release and a press briefing to every single celebrity every time they had something to say. They just went out, they went to work, 
which in their case was making a product for public consumption for us, and they went home and they complained about the way that the country was going or the other things that they didn't like. And it was the same thing with musicians. If we were going to a concert, we weren't going there to listen to our favorite singers get up and talk about the country and the politics of the country. They didn't have a platform for that on stage either. We could maybe infer some of their personal politics from the lyrics, especially if they were the ones that were writing the songs, but for the most part we weren't going there to get lectured about politics. We were going there to listen to the artist's art and consume the artist's art. Now Twitter changed all of this. Once Twitter came out, there were millions of Americas that were jumping out and signing up for Twitter as soon as they could. And it had nothing to do with whether or not they wanted to share their ideas in limited characters with like-minded individuals like themselves around the country. For the most part, Twitter was out there for people to run out and follow their favorite celebrities and listen to their real-life musings. It was another way for people to go out there and realize that, oh, these celebrities, they're really just like us, and they're no different from the rest of us. And for the first few years about this, that was true. For the most part, when Twitter first came out, all of the tweets were about, oh, going to the dry cleaner, driving in my car, or having my driver drive my car, whichever the case may be, going shopping, and doing all of these other mundane tasks, and it was a way to bridge the gap between celebrity and individual. I don't necessarily know if that was a good thing or not, but it was a way to bridge the gap. Unfortunately, this also gave celebrities a political platform, and in a country that celebrates celebrity enough to sign millions of people up for Twitter just so they can see these musings and thoughts of the Twitter users means that there was a market for the ideas of politics of celebrities out there. And the people who were celebrities were very eager to jump at the chance to share their ideas with people. And it's insane to think of the fact that people weren't going to be swayed by the ideas of their favorite celebrities. It's the kind of country that we live in and it's a model of the kind of reverence that we've had for these celebrities for as long as I can remember. I do want to clarify and say that before there was Twitter there was opportunity for celebrities to get out on their soapboxes and tell the world what they thought about the politics and policies of the world and essentially how they wanted their fans to vote. The problem with it was whether it was People Magazine or whether it was J14, it was a much more limited scope than what Twitter is. These celebrities wanted to have the spotlight and they were jumping at every chance that they could to get into a magazine and try and inject some of their culture into the rest of the country and make the rest of the country want to dress and act like them. But for the most part, they got two pages once a month in order to do so. There were certain celebrities that got into every single issue of some of these magazines, but they got it once a month. Their fans could sit through and tear their magazines apart for 30 days and not have another opportunity to hear a different outlook from their favorite celebrities for another 30 days. And once again, Twitter changed all of that, making all of these celebrities' thoughts instantly accessible 24-7, and they took advantage of it. Now, there are a lot of celebrities out there, too, that I've noticed, especially over the last six years, who have gone out, they've become famous enough to get noticed for every single thing that they do and have people following them with every single thing that they do and they've just stopped performing in their craft, instead dedicating their time to full-time activism and full-time promoting of political policies that they think that their fans should be supporting blindly without any sort of thought just because they say so. Amy Schumer is one of these people. When's the last time you actually saw Amy Schumer in something where she was making you laugh? 
When was the last time that she was telling a joke in an interview? Amy Schumer has turned around her career and dedicated herself to be a complete spokesperson for the Democrat Party and not going out and making any more movies or TV shows or TV appearances. Alyssa Milano is another example of this. What's the last thing you saw Alyssa Milano in? Most likely, the last time you saw her was sitting behind Judge Brett Kavanaugh during his hearings and scowling at him. And it goes further than that. It goes beyond acting. There's Broadway, where Alyssa Fox believes that we need to understand what it is that she believes about politics. Or Adina Menzel, who refused to go and sing at Trump's inauguration, even though nobody who has any care outside of Broadway knows who she is. It goes into music with the Taylor Swift thing, and it even goes into sports with the thoughts of Colin Kaepernick, in spite of the fact that he hasn't started a game in three years at this point. It's easy to say that most people don't care about what any of these people think about their politics, but yet we still see articles and TV appearances and extensive news coverage about their thoughts on most of these things and yet all of their fans especially the young fans are running out when some of these celebrities go out and do things like this to get a photo opportunity with these celebrities who are publicly acting out in favor of or against certain political policies this is especially prominent among young people i will admit fully when I was 16, I don't know if I would have jumped completely on board with it, but had I found out some sort of activist cause that Michelle Branch was involved in, I would have at least given it a glance and read through it, and possibly had a bias towards it or against it depending on what Branch thought. This is especially prevalent among the youth in our nation and the people who are coming out and getting excited for the fact that they're going to be able to vote for the first time and led by people like David Hogg and their favorite celebrities to do so in a certain way. While it's disingenuous to believe that the sway and influence of Hollywood celebrities in politics is completely irrelevant, it is important that we also need to take some time and look at what happens to people who don't fall in line with the particular narrative that the majority of Hollywood is trying to preach. Kanye West is a big example of this, and there are a lot of people out there who believe that West is only being targeted and discriminated against because he is black and against the narrative. But you do need to take time and step out and look outside the box and realize that West is also being ostracized because he has a public opinion and it doesn't sit alongside of all of his peers in line and lockstep. And there are others James Woods, Ted Nugent, Scott Adams, the Dilbert guy, and numerous other celebrities out there who don't toe the party line for the Democrats, who either speak out actively against Democrats, or just come out and say that they're in the middle or undecided, who are completely ostracized. And some of them lose projects and work. People like Norm MacDonald, who have lost acting opportunities, show opportunities, and otherwise, because they have an opinion that doesn't fall completely in line with the rest of Hollywood. They're called crazy, they're called insane, and they're blackballed from everything. I do think part of this fell into Swift's decision when she decided that she wanted to come out and speak out against Blackburn. If she is truly independent, like I believe, then the opportunity for her to come out and speak out against a particular politician that she disagrees with, whose party happens to fall against the favor of the majority of her fans, she does have some publicity for doing this. And she doesn't have to violate her own values to do so. She can sell her soul without actually selling her soul. As we get older, we stop caring about what our celebrities think about politics, or even what their values are, and instead focus mainly on our own values and what we think about politics. But it would be completely disingenuous to say that there is no sway of celebrity in politics, especially among the majority of our electorate, and especially among the youth in this country. 
it is a phenomenon that we can't ignore and we do need to start looking into ways to try and reach out to young people through a celebrity if we can if we can find celebrities who aren't completely afraid of being blacklisted just because of a wrong thing political view who's your favorite celebrity out there what does your favorite celebrity think about politics and do you know which way your favorite celebrity votes I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comment section below and especially over on Twitter that is at Ed's blog Twitter with a one in place of the eye. Thanks as always for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care. You're